Today's Wednesday, October 4th, 2017, and you know what time it is. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good to be here. Yes, it is. Yeehaw. It is great to be here this Wednesday morning where I want to share with all of you that I got a good night's sleep finally. Oh, I can't remember the last time I actually slept through the night uh, and literally just did not have, you know, did not wake up feeling awful. And I'm surprised because I got up early. And so I don't know what that secret was, but I'm going to see if I can duplicate it tonight somehow. But yeah, man, it literally has been weeks since I've had a good night's sleep. So I hope everybody out there is sleeping okay as well. But if you're not, I will try to share my uh, my feedback with you in terms of what worked for me, and, and maybe someday we can all get a good night's sleep. Anyway, it is great to be here. What an what a uh, man! What a busy, crazy week. Um, I first want to I want to uh, say and and just let everybody in Las Vegas know. You know, obviously our our thoughts, our prayers are going out to all of you. What an insane thing to have happened on Monday. And uh, I know in the office, we were just standing around talking about it, and it makes you realize how crazy people can be. And trying to figure out why people do this is almost impossible to do, and not that any other decade was any better necessarily in how our world is or was, but uh, let's hope that uh, these types of events are not sensationalized to the point that uh, there are copycat type people out there doing the same thing. And I'm sure as time progresses, um, more information will be shared. But the reality is, is that it was a terrible, tragic event, obviously. And uh, for any human being to just simply do that is unfathomable. So want to say that first off. Secondly, I want to thank everybody who sent me... So many nice emails, so many nice comments, so many nice uh, text messages who called me telling me that I was not alone. I greatly appreciate that. It really kind of floored me, and uh, and just I want to say thank you to you. And not to say that I necessarily felt as if I was all alone, but there were days, there are days that I feel, and as I'm certain many of you out there feel the same way, that you're just in this all by yourself, when in reality you have friends, you have industry, family who are there to help you, and even real family to, uh, to, uh, to, that, to that regard. So really, I, I do appreciate that. Um, as I've said it in the past, when I do the show, I record it, gets uploaded, it's done for the day, and I kind of forget and, and kind of file the show back for the week. And then to, to see the emails that were coming through, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I almost forgot what I said. So uh, on top of that, I attended the NASA Wisconsin Elevator Symposium last Thursday. I was only able to spend one day there, but had a great time. It was cool to see how many people, how many who uh, came out to support the event. I want to thank uh, NASA International for their support in holding the silent auction, the vendors who brought cool goodies, and those people who bid on those cool uh, goodies, and to Emerald for processing all the credit card payments and all that. Thank you so much for um, letting the ESF do that and supporting uh, a good cause. We greatly appreciate that. But great show. Great to see friends that I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, great to see family and uh, just, yeah, busy week. Then on Friday, um, held a retirement party for uh, uh, 
close friend of mine who I've worked with the last 18 and a half years, our sales manager, Jim Bjorkwist, if you've ever called up or needed assistance on, uh, you know, over the phone, uh, Jim Bjorkwist, who is a great guy, um, is probably one of the people you would talk to when you think about the number of orders and quotes and phone calls this guy took. It was quite amazing. So, uh, Jim, I hope you have a wonderful retirement. It was well-deserved, well-earned, and we wish you nothing but the best when it comes to health. Um success and adventures as you and your wife uh, partake in your next step in life, which we hope is very enjoyable to you. So it's kind of a bittersweet week for me, um, but still good to be here. Remember to, 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 to think safety. And uh, today's show, not a ton of content. Um, there's a couple of cool articles I want to share and ones that uh, are def- definitely worthy of uh, you know sharing with coworkers and friends. So without further ado, we'll get uh, we'll cover the news of the week and have you out of here a lickety split. All right, news is up next. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. All right, Channel Twelve KV. KFV News, excuse me, has a uh, pretty neat article on uh, Phoenix Modular Elevator um, having students, high school students, come in and giving them presentation and and learning about the manufacturing process and stuff like this. I think it's great, and I I have a feeling there are more companies out there that actually do this kind of thing. Um, But when students, you know, my, my kids are in high school right now, and honestly, I'm not sure, you know, college is not the... Uh, end all save all type of uh, program for everybody and it's neat for students to see the different careers that are out there Um, and I think uh, Allison that's awesome that you do this and again I'm sure there are other companies that do this uh, throughout the our industry and it's just neat to to see it uh, covered like this online so pretty neat pretty pretty cool stuff so I think it's also a great opportunity to get you know young people involved in possible careers in the future, engineering, whatever. So I thought that was cool. So I wanted to leave with that. Okay, tomorrow the Chicago Elevator Association October meeting will be held, October 5th at the clubhouse uh, in Oak Brook, Illinois. Uh, Amanda Smith is coming in from the NAC to present. Looking forward to that. I will be at that event, and there are nothing, there's nothing on my calendar or that's going to prevent me from, from being there. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. It's been way too long since I've been to, uh, to a meeting um, the kitties or the the kiddos, I should say, uh, have their game on Friday and that's homecoming, but there's nothing that's going to affect, uh, affect me from getting there. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing Amanda. Okay. Now, uh, one of these, uh, those news articles that you like to read about, glad the outcome was okay. Uh, newsday.com close that down. has an article in, in Nassau County police officer helped, helped deliver a, a healthy baby boy in an elevator at the South Nassau Communities Hospital and Oceanside Authorities said on Saturday. Uh, pretty cool. So love to read these kind of articles. Um, and uh, nice to see those, um, our men and women in blue, going above and beyond to assist the general public. So it's it's a good good piece and uh, thought, thought it was awesome. PalmBeachPost.com has a stupid what seems to be a damaged property report, noting that a woman's $900 shoes get caught in an escalator. Um, so she wasn't injured at all, but it still showed up in the police blotter as the headline. So I'm assuming it showed up because literally it's kind of silly when you think about it. But um, yeah, $900 shoes seems a bit a bit crazy. Anyway, um, Singapore, here's an article from Channel News Asia uh, leads with the title 13 escalator incidents due to technical faults since November 2016. The Minister for National Development, Lawrence Wong, noted that these technical faults are not due to user behavior. And there's a pretty pretty significant photo here shown um, with some steps that are that are crushed. And there's not a whole lot of information that, that is shared in here. Um, I'm curious to know how many accidents uh, occurred that were related to user behavior compared to the 13 that were cited here due to technical faults. And um, as Lawrence Wong noted or added that as the Titan maintenance regimen was only put in place in November, the Ministry 
of natural development is still monitoring its effects. So I think these are good steps in the right direction. Um, obviously, you should never see an escalator do this. Um, that's in the photograph there. And, and obviously, equipment needs, um, needs maintenance, all of it, cars, uh, air conditioners, uh, elevators, escalators, everything. So uh, it's, it's good to see Singapore's taking steps to, to make, uh, make equipment safer uh, through maintenance, through technicians. Okay, the Daily Titan, this is a news uh, source for the Cal State Fullerton, has an article, What to Do to, If You Get Stuck in an Elevator at CSUF. And I really wish it went further, further along. Um, you know, and, and it, it does touch on the fact that where you should stay is in an elevator if it if it becomes stalled or stuck. But the reality is, is that I, I kind of wish, you know, I wish it did a little bit more because uh, universities are are very susceptible to uh, roughhousing, and there have been accidents where students have fallen through elevator doors when they've been roughhousing with each other, pushed up against them, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of stuff on a college campus setting that um, that should be addressed more so than what to do if, if the elevator becomes uh, stalled. So it just would have been nice if they went a little bit further than that, but uh, but they didn't. Okay, subway accessibility issues highlighted. This is amnewyork.com. You know, when it comes to transit systems, transits were, were built, most of them anyway, in the United States were built long before the accessibility or ADA came into effect. So trying to retrofit stations that are out there now is not an easy thing to do. Uh, this is an article talking about um, there are still accessibility issues that have been highlighted by officials who pledge stair-free commutes. And the reality is it's not, you know, stairs are not evil. Stairs are important for a variety of reasons, obviously, as you go into the, uh, into the subway systems and whatnot. Um, but the reality is that, you know, it, some stations just simply can't be adapted the way that they, they, you, everybody would want them to, to, to have happen, you know? So, um, so anyway, but link is in the show notes if you want to read it. And if you have ever had a, an injury or a procedure done where your accessibility was limited, you know, or you should know that, um, you know, obviously there are people that live in this world each and every day that is very difficult, uh, to make, making the world to navigate. I think for the most part, most places in the United States have, have, uh, taken the proper steps to ensure accessibility, uh, happened in my neighborhood. You know, they, they came up and they, uh, tore out the curbs that went into the street, put in those red, uh, rumble strip pads and made sure that there were no cracks, um, that would prevent a motorized scooter or a wheelchair from from rolling across the sidewalk. Now, not every not every village and township has the ability to, you know, to allocate funds to do that. But um, yeah, it's, I, I think for the most part, the United States does a pretty good job. And at default, uh, you know, MTA for not doing their their uh, their due diligence, it's a little concerning. And the last news article of the show is very, very serious. And I, I just, it, it doesn't necessarily relate to elevators uh, or escalators or our industry, although there are elevators on TV towers. And I, and this is part of the reason why I had, uh, had linked it. Um, you know, our company is personally involved with, with projects that involve TV towers, which can have a variety of issues. Um, including, you know, elevators not working or et cetera, et cetera. So but they're outside most of the time. So anyway, my, my point here is that there were three workers that uh, that fell nearly 1,000 feet to their deaths from a South Florida television tower, and they were contract workers who were installing, I think, some type of new antenna, and um, it's terrible. I mean, this is a serious, serious accident that could have been prevented depending on what OSHA will find. What's more concerning is that the company that these these workers work for, um, you know, there's there's some violations that were cited. One of which is safety nets, which you know, again, you've got a penalty here that is shown in the article, but at the end of the day, it's not going to bring back the three guys who who died. 
in this serious tragedy. So there are dangerous industries um, in the construction trade, in the maintenance trade, et cetera, et cetera, that we all need to do our, our part to, um, you know, to take our steps. And, and as much as, yeah, no matter what. And so, so here's some statistics for people who work on, um, on communication towers, 132 since 2003 have fallen to their deaths. Man, that's a lot. Um, so anytime you have in the opportunity, anytime you have the chance of falling from a significant distance, I'm I don't know what percentage of your, you know, the chance for an accident or fatality comes, but I, I I'm pretty sure it's 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 pretty significant. You know, if if, if you're working 30 feet above the ground on a ladder, OSHA is pretty pretty tight on on ladder usage. Um, but the reality is that OSHA sent the member memorandum to employees stating every single one of these tragedies was preventable. And you know what? Every single tragedy fatality in the elevator industry should be have, should have been preventable when you look back. So as you do your toolbox talks on Monday, um, or you meet with your with your team that's out in the field, share this article. Share this uh, statement, and um, it applies to every company out there. Um, and I don't know if we'll learn anything more from this once OSHA comes in and investigates. Uh, I hope I hope we do. I hope light is shed on this, and I hope that you know more than fines are are written because at the end of the day, the fines are one thing. Corporation can absorb that to some extent, can get around it, can get it uh, reduced. But if the companies are not doing what they're supposed to be doing to uh, ensure safety, um, then shame on them. And if workers are not following the safety practices that those companies have put into place, then again, shame on them as well. But um, I, I truly hope that um, you know everybody who works from from any industry on high you know, high areas or, or towers or buildings or whatever are taking the proper steps to ensure fatality through fall is not is not something that would happen to them. Yeah, so kind of scary. So here's a here's another paragraph I didn't read. 2012 PBS Frontline and ProPublica cooperated on an investigation featuring the high incident of fatalities on communication towers. Um, and they, they found the major cell phone companies installing new towers to meet expanding demand for cell service used a complex web of subcontracting to avoid scrutiny. What? <laughs> I'll let everybody figure out what that means because I know what that means. And uh, you can come to your own conclusion on your own time. So anyway, so be safe. Number one, every day, be safe. Be safe, be safe, be safe. Well, that's going to do it for the show. Another short one, which is kind of nice still, not necessarily ending on a good note, but an important note nonetheless. So make sure you're thinking and practicing safety each and every day. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing the show. Thank you for everything you do out there. Keep it up. And uh, uh, see many of you at the CEA meeting tomorrow night. Looking forward to that. And just enjoy. I'm looking forward to a, a weekend that's not crazy busy. So we'll see if we can get that this weekend. And another good night's sleep. That I'm looking forward to, I hope. So I'll let you know how it goes next week. All right, everybody, have a great rest of the week. Be safe. We will talk to you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.